Aerospace is a very interesting sector. It's a sector where you have the best form of diplomacy. Countries work together regardless of any short-term political view. Because at the end of the day, we're solving solutions for humanity. And the UAE is no different. We're very excited about this sector, and we see it as a sustainable long-term sector for the UAE. Space is a very important sector and need to be regulated and coordinated. And this is where UAE Space Agency was uh, established in 2014. The amount of investment that the country has spent on space activities in excess of $6 billion so far. We have more than 50 companies providing space services within UAE, and we are looking forward to develop this forward. Because we're a young country just getting into space, it's very important for us to first set the policy. We did that in 2016. In 2019, we issued National Space Strategy as well as space law and regulations. The first objective in our law is to attract more space activities. What's also unique about our space law is that we tackled futuristic and emerging matters when it comes to space. An example, space tourism, which is currently allowed by our law. Utilization of space resources, launching from space, whether from the international space stations or from any celestial body, and try to translate that into a national regime that try to balance between two objectives, serving the commercial, but at the same time, trying to capture the safety and security requirements, protection of environment requirements, whether the environment on Earth, but also environment in space. We've also, alongside that, developed an investment promotion plan. The UAE is one of the first investors in new space through our investment in Virgin Galactic, so we understand the potential, and therefore, we've designed the space sector to cater for that. We offer tax-free environment, we offer incentives, and we hope that this will not only be the major big missions alone, but also a whole ecosystem of a space sector that includes everything from universities to research labs to companies operating right here out of the UAE. UAE just sent the first astronaut to the International Space Station. Hazza al Mansouri was sent to International Space Station to do science, and also he provided aspiration to the youth of this region. We have been, as a space agency, mandated to work uh, to try to bring you know, the Arab regions, the Arab countries, uh, together to do uh, a joint space project. The Arab Space Cooperation Group is an initiative uh, by the UAE, uh, along with 11 Arab countries in the region. Today, the leadership of the, of the country do not want the UAE to work alone. We've managed to develop a leadership position. We're trying to work with other countries to help them establish their own space programs. We also have a project that encompasses several countries. It's called the 813 satellite. So we made sure in our design to include representation from these countries where they help design it, they help manage the project, and they help retain that knowledge within their country. It will take four years to design and build, and hopefully by end of 2023, the satellite will be launched. This project will be the first satellite having hyperspectral sensor covering the all Arabic countries. One of the aspects or important aspects is the environmental issues. Today we do have big challenges in the region, monitoring the changes, the climate change. That's why I strongly believe that this project is going to be a very good example regionally and internationally by such international collaboration. The Emirates Mars Mission program aimed to design a spacecraft called the HOPE, which will be launched in July 2020. It has a unique orbit where it allows the spacecraft to act like a weather satellite. We are trying to capture information regarding the Martian atmosphere. We have infrared spectrometers, an ultraviolet, and also a camera. The whole project is the first ever spacecraft that ever been built in the region. So we are leveraging on this program to establish a core of engineering scientists from UE. And this cannot be done without having a research and development arm in local universities. We were very aware that there will be a big limitation short term in terms of talent. So we decided to get in touch with the academic sector. We already have four research and development centers in space as well as three universities offering programs in space. And this is why space comes in very handy as a great tool to explain the benefits of STEM. We're delivering solutions that not only help astronauts on the ISS, but help people globally. We're seeing already, as we speak within three years, 
a great shift in interest in STEM. We're seeing an increase in students studying postgraduate studies, and that really tells us that we need to work a bit more and even expand that across the country. With the NSSTC, I worked on the AOCS, Altitude Orbital Control System, which helps stabilize the CubeSat during mission. And I learned a lot from uh, all of the people I worked from and from their expertise. I'm a programming student in UAE University. I learned how to program the CubeSats using many programming languages. I'm a physics student at UAE University. I joined the satellite program, which provides me with the STEM skills required to work in space industry. As we know, space requires long-term planning. We are looking forward with optimistic. We have a great cooperation with most every space agency on Earth. We learn, we engage, we network, and we try to facilitate the transfer of knowledge and technology to uh, our country. We have a mission to Mars. We have our first astronaut. We have our first 100% built satellite made in the UAE. And we're also building a science city, a Mars science city in the UAE to bring space close to everybody within the UAE. So I think it all started with a dream and today it's becoming a reality.